It would be nearly a year out from the release of Making Magic completing The Sims 1 franchise before its inevitable sequel, The Sims 2, which would release in September of 2004. In five short years since 1999-2000, when The Sims was first released and introduced into the world, technology and video gaming had come a long way, taking 3D video gaming to the next level, especially when it comes to graphics. Within those five years, a new Goliath in video gaming was born, and with it a dedicated fan base willing to see what would come next for The Sims and if a sequel was on the horizon. Thankfully for them, a sequel was indeed in the works. For those new to my channel, my name is Michael and I want to welcome you to Sovereign Gaming in Life Sims, the YouTube channel where I build worlds, lots, and share my thoughts on video games that I enjoy in the life simulation gaming space. Like I did with my Sims 1 tier reviews, I will be looking at the following criteria and scoring it out of 10 based on my opinion and playing experience. That criteria will include its concept, innovation, gameplay features, the impact on the current franchise, and the impact on future Sims franchises. And as you see there, innovation is indeed a new category, and I will explain that when we actually get to the innovation section. So there's something a little new this go around. Anyways, based on those scores, I'm going to throw each of these games and expansion packs from The Sims 2 on a tier list that I created at the end of the video. And today, we're going to cover The Sims 2 base game, a game that sets up a wonderful and beautiful unfolding of yet another iconic franchise in The Sims. So with that said, let's begin by discussing The Sims 2's base game's concept. So what was the one thing that Simmers Everywhere felt was missing from The Sims 1 franchise? Life stages and aging. You see, there are tons of mods out there for The Sims 1 that delivered on the concept of aging up your sim and really allowing the player to live a full life through their sims. Players to this day have a hard time watching a sim die from old age and that is a testament to how deep the emotional connection exists between players and all of the sims franchises really. This is actually quite a humane and beautiful connection between a player and their game if you ask me. I was a player that did end up downloading that mod or one of the mods that allowed you to age up your sims back in the sims 1 days which I think led to me to being a little more tech savvy when it comes to working with software or at least in the context of using mods and such for the sims like I can find a file and troubleshoot problems occurring in my game but I'm getting distracted here. The biggest missing piece of gameplay offered to simmers in the sims 1 was the ability to age up your sims and have them lead a fulfilling and complete life. This, there needed to be more storytelling elements that players can play with, and quite frankly, this needed to happen at the game's core, hence why The Sims 2 came to be, giving players that base game foundation needed to usher in a new era of Sims. And it didn't just stop at life stages either. EA put pregnancy in the game, aspirations, lifetime wishes, lifetime rewards, and more, and I'll expand on that in the innovation section of this review that's upcoming. <laughs> <laughs> the Sims 2 had to have a revolutionary concept in order for it to be successful, and the concept couldn't have been developed any better if you ask me. And so I'm giving the base game a 10 out of 10 on the concept, and I alluded it to it before, but now I want to discuss the innovation aspects of the base game. Firstly, welcome to the new innovation section. This is the section where I will review each of the games and really discuss like what new gameplay elements that the video game or the expansion pack brings. And so to help differentiate between the concept and like what kind of new things that a video game brings to the franchise, in this case, I'll be discussing how the different entries of the Sims 2 franchise uh, kind of invents upon itself. I decided to create this new section just to really focus on that and to separate like a creative concept from what actual uh, what actual new experiences that a video game brings to players. And so that's why I really created this new innovation uh, section of the tier reviews here. So yeah, <laughs> with that said, when it comes to the Sims base game, uh, like 
let me put it this way. When it comes to Sims base games across all franchises, so if you include The Sims 1, 2, 3, and 4, they, like the base games themselves, honestly set the tone for what's to come. They quite literally hard code and set the limits for where the franchise can grow. And so the base game has a high hill to climb when it comes to setting up the framework and direction of the franchise, while also being a sellable piece of product itself. In fact, I would go as far to say the obvious in that the base game is indeed the most important game out of the franchise for those reasons. And when it comes to how The Sims 2 base game innovates and brings new gameplay experiences to players, The Sims 2 base game honestly does it in spades. Like I already mentioned it before, but the base, but in the base game for The Sims 2, we are actually getting life stages, aspirations and lifetime wishes, pregnancy, memories, relationship statuses, lifetime rewards, more building options, more objects, real weddings, parties, including wedding parties, more create a sim options and the list honestly just goes on the sims 2 base game honestly innovates and develops the sims 1 in every aspect of its gameplay and by develops i mean it takes it to the next level and it takes it to the level that simmers were really expecting and really wanting and so the sims 2 really did feel like the next proper evolution of life simulation games and that is why it earns itself an easy 10 out of 10 in innovation for me but just because its concepts and the big picture aspects of the game were well formulated, does that mean that EA managed to execute the vision successfully in its gameplay? My short answer to that is yes. But I gotta give you guys a disclaimer. I never got the base game when it first came out. I only started playing The Sims 2 after the University Expansion Pack was released, and I'll explain why in that future video, because my reasoning had nothing to do with The Sims 2's appeal. The reason why I gave that disclaimer is that I wasn't privy to any glitches that were occurring in the base game at that time. This was also a time where video game updates were really starting to become a thing. A controversial <laughs> industry trend, if I do say so myself, that is filled with mixed feelings, definitely on my end at least. Like The Sims 1 never really had any major game updates back in the day, but that's because video game studios didn't see the value in updating their games at the time and plus like their capabilities of actually doing so was limited then, but that's not what we're discussing here today. I think that when it comes to all of the gameplay offered in The Sims 1's base game, that it was executed very well, if not flawlessly. However, because I don't have first-hand experience playing The Sims 2 from its base game journey at its release, it is kind of hard for me to tell if there was any game-breaking glitches at launch. However, like, I don't remember The Sims 2 community having an abundance of gameplay problems at launch, so feel free to comment below if I'm wrong in this. And so with that said, like, the fact that you can play a sim from birth to death was actually groundbreaking in of itself, and the execution of the new wants and fears system, like, flawless yet again from The Sims 2 team. Memories were also new and innovative, allowing players to really reflect on their sims' lives and to really give a sim's life meaning just by the different memories that they would collect. And of course, who can forget the family tree? Likely an influential play, uh, piece of gameplay that encouraged legacy plays and playthroughs for years to come, because legacy plays weren't really introduced until we got around to The Sims 2, when it, we could actually play a sim through their full life. And it's such a popular play style now that, you know, it's hard not to talk about it when, the, when we talk about family trees in the base game. There was just really so much content that was created from just legacy gameplay alone. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, like that's like when it comes to the gameplay section here, it's going to be another easy 10 out of 10 on the gameplay since it was executed well enough to set up the remainder of the Sims 2 franchise for a successful decade of memories to come. Like I'm sure that you can guess, uh, I'm sure that you can guess it, but like, uh, when we move into our next section on how it impacts the rest of The Sims 2 franchise, it certainly paints like a really positive story there. So let's jump in and discuss that. I keep saying it, but it bears repeating. The Sims 2's base game set up the rest of the franchise for success. 
In today's review, I actually will choose not to spend a lot of time discussing its impact on the rest of The Sims 2 franchise because it is very obvious how the base game sets up the rest of the franchise uh, to succeed with its innovative gameplay mechanics that each expansion pack, in my opinion, really successfully plays upon. So. I'm just going to give it its well-deserved 10 out of 10 on its influence for the rest of the franchise and move on to discuss its influence on future franchises because I have a little more to say on that. A big reason why players enjoy The Sims 2 to this day and why there's still quite a huge significant community that backs The Sims 2 is that the Sims 2 is a very clean franchise in that there aren't a lot of game breaking glitches and there's a ton of custom content out there to empower players to play how they want. This impacts future franchises in an unconventional way as the sims 2 franchise serves as a totem and a legitimate option for players to refer to when seeking superior life simulation gaming options in 2023 which is the year that i'm recording this in other words the sims 2 base game was a high quality game that started a high quality franchise and simmers that played the sims 2 remembered that it actually ran very well the Sims 2's impact on future franchises is felt even to this day. The Sims 2 gave us life stages and the ability to play our Sims from birth till death. That in of itself is a standard that every future franchise had to follow, but there is more. Every franchise now has to offer some sort of a wants mechanic for each sim to generate, which helps to give players a sense that their sims are individual beings that want certain things, so it really helps to establish that deeper connection between the person and their video game, and that was something that was started by The Sims 2. The Sims 2 breathed life into the Sims themselves and players really connected with them and re-establishing that connection with every future franchise or at least trying to has proven to be a challenge I would argue. Creating a, deep, a deeper connection excuse me, between Simmers and other Sims really came from the gameplay mechanics introduced in the Sims 2 space game that persist in future franchises to this day. And for that I'm going to give the Sims 2 base game another 10 out of 10 in respect to its impact on future franchises. As the first game in the franchise getting a perfect score of 50 out of 50 putting it in the actual perfection category, it really feels right for me. Now. For those of you thinking that I was favoring The Sims 2 and The Sims 1 by giving out perfect scores, I'll just kindly remind you that I am someone who that operates on the principle that if something cannot be demonstrated, then it cannot serve as a benchmark to be measured against. If an aspect of a game cannot achieve a perfect score in one of my categories, then I need to adjust my judging so that it actually has a chance to do just that. Sure, I gave a lot of perfect scores to The Sims 1 franchise as I was reviewing it, but I was also very penalizing when it came to certain expansion packs. I consider myself very hot and cold when it comes to judging games. Either you hit the mark or you didn't, and the reason why you didn't hit the mark will determine what soft score you will get other than like a 0, a 5, or a 10. <laughs> Trust and believe, I think that there are some duds in The Sims 2 franchise than there are in The Sims 1 franchise, and I can't wait to share my thoughts on those. Do I think that The Sims University is a dud? Well, you'll just have to wait and see for the next episode to get my thoughts on the first Sims 2 expansion pack. If you enjoyed this review and my thoughts on The Sims 2 base game, then feel free to like and consider subscribing. Furthermore, I just want to take a moment to say thank you for watching and that you are more than welcome to share your thoughts and memories or any stories on The Sims 2 in the comments section below. Up next, I'll be reviewing the first expansion pack for The Sims 2, which is The Sims 2 University. This expansion pack has got a lot of controversy when it comes to the gameplay and I'm excited to explore that with you guys. Anyways, thank you for watching and I hope you have yourself a wonderful day.